Slide 1. Welcome to Health Management Information Systems Electronic Health Records. This is Lecture A. The component Health Management Information Systems is a theory component that provides an introduction to healthcare applications and the systems that use them. Health Information Technology Standards, Health Related Data Structures, and Enterprise Architecture in Healthcare Organizations. Lecture A will define an Electronic Medical Record, EMR, and Electronic Health Record, EHR, and explain their similarities and differences, identify attributes and functions of an EHR, discuss the issues surrounding EHR adoption and implementation, and describe the impact of EHRs on patient care. Slide 2. The objectives for this unit, Electronic Health Records, are to State the similarities and differences between an electronic medical record, EMR, and electronic health record, EHR. Identify attributes and functions of an EHR. Describe the perspectives of healthcare providers and the public regarding acceptance of or issues with an EHR, which can serve as facilitators of or major barriers to its adoption. And explain how the use of an EHR can affect patient care safety, efficiency of care practices, and patient outcomes. Slide 3. Additional objectives for this unit, electronic health records, are to discuss how Health Information Exchange, HIE, and Nationwide Health Information Network, NHIN, impact healthcare delivery and the practice of healthcare providers. Outline issues regarding governmental regulation of EHR systems, such as meaningful use of interoperable health information technology and a qualified EHR. Summarize how the Institute of Medicine's Vision for 21st Century Healthcare and Wellness may impact health management information systems. And identify how ongoing developments in biomedical informatics can affect future uses and challenges related to health information systems. Slide 4. As a way of introduction to electronic health records, let's identify why a patient or medical record exists in the first place. According to Dr. Reiser, the purpose of a patient record is to recall observations, to inform others, to instruct students, to gain knowledge, to monitor performance, and to justify interventions. Riser, 1991, page 902. The medical record is a way of communicating between staff managing patient care. It also allows for an integrated view of patient data. The patient medical record is also the legal business record for a healthcare provider, as the American Health Information Management Association, AHIMA, EHIM work group on maintaining the legal EHR pointed out in the article Maintaining a Legally Sound Health Record, Paper and Electronic. In this same article, the work group states, as such, it must be maintained in a manner that follows applicable regulations, accreditation standards, professional practice standards, and legal standards. AHIMA, 2005, paragraph 1. Slide 5. Historically, patient records have been paper-based. However, more and more healthcare providers are moving away from paper-based to adoption of an electronic form. There are two terms associated with the electronic form. They are electronic medical record, or EMR, and electronic health record, or EHR. The report, Defining Key Health Information Technology Terms, defines an EMR as an electronic record of health-related information on an individual that can be created, gathered, managed, and consulted by authorized clinicians and staff within one healthcare organization. NAHIT, 2008, page 6. This same report stated health-related information encompasses health, wellness, administrative data, and information derived from public health and scientific research. It includes past and present observations and facts 
documented in the provision of health care that may be related to preventing illness and promoting wellness or that may be used in the process of informing consent. NAHIT 2008, page 10. An electronic medical record is a record of medical care created, managed, and maintained by one healthcare organization. This does not mean a single physical location. There may be instances when information is shared among multiple facilities and still be within one EMR. For example, an electronic record used in a physician practice with several offices is still an EMR when all sites are using the same proprietary data structure and architecture and the information is not moving outside the confines of the organization. EMRs are the electronic equivalent of an individual's legal medical record for use by providers and staff within one healthcare organization. Slide 6. The purpose of an EMR is to provide an electronic equivalent of an individual's legal medical record for use by providers and staff within one healthcare organization. The EMR is understood to meet specific business needs for care, reimbursement, and disclosure, follow regulation and rules promulgated by federal, state, or accrediting entities, and contain information as defined by the provider organization. The electronic medical record encapsulates a record of medical care provided in a single healthcare organization, that is, an intra-organizational medical record. Slide 7. The other term associated with electronic records is Electronic Health Record, or EHR. The report Defining Key Health Information Technology Terms also provided a definition for electronic health record. An EHR is an electronic record of health-related information on an individual that conforms to nationally recognized interoperability standards and that can be created, managed, and consulted by authorized clinicians and staff across more than one healthcare organization. NAHIT 2008, page 6. Being a repository of individual health records that reside in numerous information systems and locations, EHRs are intended to support efficient, high quality integrated healthcare independent of the place and time of healthcare delivery. Consequently, EHRs are part of a health information technology infrastructure. Slide 8. The purpose of an EHR is to provide an electronic equivalent of an individual's health record for use by providers and staff across more than one healthcare organization. An EHR is interorganizational, that is, two or more unrelated healthcare organizations contribute to the record, which becomes an aggregation of one record focused around a person's comprehensive health history rather than being one provider's record. However, to arrive at this level of information aggregation, all contributors must be able to send and receive information using standards that facilitate the interoperable exchange of health-related information. An EHR is intended to support efficient, high-quality, integrated health care, independent of the place and time of health care delivery. It encapsulates an electronic equivalent of an individual's health record for use by providers and staff in multiple unrelated facilities. As the National Alliance for Health Information Technologies report, defining key health information technology terms explained, the principal difference between an EMR and an EHR is the ability to exchange information interoperably. An EMR aligns with the prevailing state of electronic records today, whether the record is branded an EMR or an EHR. However, the movement of the industry is toward electronic records that are capable of using nationally recognized interoperability standards, which is a key defining component of an EHR. NAHIT 2008, page 5. Slide 9. Adding to NAHIT's principal difference, other comparisons illustrating similarities and differences between an EMR and EHR are shown in Table 3.1.
The first row in Table 3.1 states an EMR is a record of medical care created, managed, and maintained by one healthcare organization, intra-organizational, while an EHR is a repository of individual health records that reside in numerous information systems and locations, inter-organizational. The second row explains an EMR is an integration of healthcare data from a participating collection of systems from one healthcare organization, in contrast to an EHR, which is an aggregation of health related information into one record focused around a person's health history, that is, a comprehensive longitudinal record. The third row points out an EMR is consulted by authorized clinicians and staff within one healthcare organization, while an EHR is consulted by authorized clinicians and staff across more than one healthcare organization. The fourth and final row reiterates NAHIT's principal difference, that is, in an EMR, data continuity exists throughout one healthcare organization. But in the case of an EHR, data interoperability across different organizations occurs. While these distinctions can be made between an EMR and EHR, many regard the two terms as synonymous. Slide 10. According to a Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services fact sheet, electronic health records at a glance Electronic health records improve care by enabling functions that paper records cannot deliver. These include EHRs can make a patient's health information available when and where it is needed. It is not locked away in one office or another. EHRs can bring a patient's total health information together in one place and always be current. Clinicians need not worry about knowing the drugs or treatments prescribed by another provider so care is better coordinated. EHRs can support better follow-up information for patients. For example, after a clinical visit or hospital stay, instructions and information for the patient can be effortlessly provided, and reminders for other follow-up care can be sent easily or even automatically to the patient. EHRs can improve patient and provider convenience, Patients can have their prescriptions ordered and ready even before they leave the provider's office, and insurance claims can be filed immediately from the provider's office. CMS 2010, paragraph 5. Slide 11. Additionally, EHRs can link information with patient computers to point to additional resources. Patients can be more informed and involved as EHRs are used to help identify additional web resources. EHRs don't just contain or transmit information, they also compute with it. For example, a qualified EHR will not merely contain a record of a patient's medications or allergies, it will also automatically check for problems whenever a new medication is prescribed and alert the clinician to potential conflicts. EHRs can improve safety through their capacity to bring all of a patient's information together and automatically identify potential safety issues, providing decision support capability to assist clinicians. CMS 2010, paragraph 5. Slide 12. The final group of ways in which EHRs can improve care according to CMS are EHRs can deliver more information in more directions while reducing paperwork time for providers. For example, EHRs can be programmed for easy or automatic delivery of information that needs to be shared with public health agencies or quality measurement, saving clinician time. EHRs can improve privacy and security with proper training and effective policies, electronic records can be more secure than paper. EHRs can reduce costs through reduced paperwork, improved safety, reduced duplication of testing, and most of all, improved health through the delivery of more effective health care. CMS 2010, paragraph 5. With regards to improving privacy and security, EHRs can be encrypted and stored on password-protected systems, 
thereby restricting their access to only those authorized. In addition, systems can track who accessed a record, when it occurred, and for what purpose. Firewalls and other physical security measures can be put in place to prevent unauthorized users from gaining access to patient records. Overall, EHRs have the potential for improvements in patient safety and quality. However, improvements are not an automatic result of implementing an EHR. Slide 13. Thus, an electronic health record is not an electronic version of the paper record. An electronic health record has additional attributes or properties that a paper record does not. The Healthcare Information and Management Systems Society, or HIMSS, described eight attributes of an electronic health record in their report, HIMSS, Electronic Health Record Definitional Model. The first two attributes are that the EHR provides secure, reliable, real-time access to patient health record information where and when it is needed to support care, captures and manages episodic and longitudinal electronic health record information. Handler et al., 2003, page 3. Slide 14. The next three attributes, as described in the HIMSS report, are the EHR functions as clinicians' primary information resource during the provision of patient care, assists with the work of planning and delivering evidence-based care to individual and groups of patients, and supports continuous quality improvement, utilization review, risk management, and performance monitoring. Handler et al., 2003, pages 4 and 5. Slide 15. The final three attributes listed in the HIMSS report are the EHR captures the patient health-related information needed for reimbursement, provides longitudinal, appropriately masked information to support clinical research, public health reporting, and population health initiatives, and supports clinical trials. Handler et al., 2003, pages 6 and 7. In addition to those identified in the HIMSS report, two additional attributes are the EHR supports timely access to patient information and by more than one person at a time and provides the ability to generate reports that can help measure activity and determine levels of compliance with policies and evidence-based medicine protocols. Slide 16. In addition to the HIMSS report, Health Level 7 International, or HL7, published an EHR system functional model. According to HL7's website, HL7 is an ANSI-accredited standards developing organization dedicated to providing a comprehensive framework and related standards for the exchange, integration, sharing, and retrieval of electronic health information that supports clinical practice and the management, delivery, and evaluation of health services. HL7 2011, Paragraph 1. The HL7 EHR System Functional Model establishes EHR systems, EHRS, standards that will enable the development of EHRs based on one set of functional requirements. The model contains three sections. They are direct care functions, supportive functions, and information infrastructure functions. Slide 17. According to the HL7 EHRS model, 2007, direct care functions are functions employed in the provision of care to individual patients. Direct care functions are the set of functions that enable delivery of health care or offer clinical decision support. Subsets of direct care functions include care management, clinical decision support, and operations management and communication. Some examples of the care management subset are the capability to identify and maintain a patient record, manage patient demographics, and manage problem lists. For the clinical decision support subset, examples of direct care functionality include support for standard care plans, guidelines, protocols, support for medication and immunization administration, 
and orders, referrals, results, and care management. Examples for the operations management and communication subset are clinical workflow tasking, support clinical communication, and support for provider pharmacy communication. Slide 18. The HL7 EHRS model 2007 describes supportive functions as functions that support the delivery and optimization of care, but generally do not impact the direct care of an individual patient. These functions assist with the administrative and financial requirements associated with the delivery of health care, provide support for medical research and public health, and improve the global quality of health care. Slide 19. The final section, Information Infrastructure Functions, define the heuristics of a system necessary for reliable, secure, and interoperable computing, HL7 EHRS Model 2007. These functions are not involved in the provision of healthcare, but are necessary to ensure that the information system provides safeguards for patient safety, privacy, and information security, as well as operational efficiencies and minimum standards for interoperability. The functions for this section include security, health record information and management, registry and directory services, standard terminologies and terminology services, standards-based interoperability, business rules management, and workflow management. Slide 20. In addition to HL7's EHR systems, EHRS standards, the Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology published the Health Information Technology Initial Set of Standards, Implementation Specifications, and Certification Criteria for Electronic Health Record Technology Final Rule, 2010, which includes the following standards for the certification of EHR technology. Content Exchange Standards for Exchanging Electronic Health Information. For example, the National Council for the Prescription Drug Programs, NCPDP, Prescriber Pharmacist Interface Script Standard, or the HL7 Clinical Document Architecture, CDA, Release 2, Continuity of Care Document, CCD. Vocabulary Standards for Representing Electronic Health Information. Two examples of vocabulary standards are the systematized nomenclature of medicine clinical terms and logical observation identifiers, names and codes. Standards for health information technology to protect electronic health information created, maintained, and exchanged. For example, one standard is any encryption algorithm identified by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST as an approved security function in Annex A of the Federal Information Processing Standards, FIPS, Publication 140-2. Another example is a hashing algorithm with a security strength equal to or greater than SHA-1, Secure Hash Algorithm, SHA-1, as specified by the NIST in FIPS Pub 180-3 page 44,650. Slide 21. With more and more healthcare providers moving away from paper-based to adoption of an electronic medical record with the ultimate goal of implementing an electronic health record, it stands to reason a question one might ask is, why aren't we there yet? To answer that question, the perspectives of healthcare providers and the public regarding acceptance of or issues with an EHR will be explored. First, from the standpoint of the provider, EHR acceptance is on the rise throughout the healthcare community as more and more research supports the benefits far outweigh the costs. Regarding costs to implement, monetary incentives have been put in place by the federal government to stimulate EHR adoption. Momentum for widespread adoption and implementation has picked up since the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, or ARRA, 
was signed into law February 2009. ARRA provides many different stimulus opportunities, one of which is $19.2 billion for health IT. The Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health, often referred to as high tech, is a provision of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. The funding is expected to assist providers and states in adopting and utilizing health IT in order to achieve widespread adoption of health IT and enable electronic exchange of health information. Providers have also begun to accept EHRs since the establishment of the Certification Commission for Health Information Technology, or CCHIT. With certification, a certain comfort level exists with regards that the EHR purchased and implemented will have longevity and meet specific requirements. In addition to CCHIT, ONC authorized testing and certification bodies are Drummond Group, InfoGuard Laboratories, SLI Global Solutions, ICSA Labs, and SureScripts. The American National Standards Institute, ANSI, has been approved as the ONC Approved Accreditor, AA, for the Permanent Certification Program. Slide 22. As cited in the IHE Moves EHR Goals Forward, the public has mixed feelings about EHRs. A national Harris Interactive survey found that 45% of adults believe that tools to track and maintain their own personal medical information with an EHR system are very important, but they worry that computerization could increase rather than decrease medical errors, and that federal health privacy rules will be reduced in the name of efficiency. RSNA 2005, paragraph 9. Slide 23. A more recent poll conducted by Harris Interactive 2010 online from June 8 through the 10th, 2010, among 2,035 U.S. adults showed little change from 2009 to 2010 with regards to adults' attitudes of electronic medical records. 78% in both 2009 and 2010 answered strongly slash somewhat agree that all physicians treating me should have access to information contained in my EMR. 72 and 71% in 2009 and 2010 respectively answered strongly slash somewhat agree that an EMR would be a valuable tool to track the progress of my health. Slide 24. Even with the acceptance on the rise, barriers still exist. An editorial, Stimulating the Adoption of Health Information Technology, describes barriers to adoption as their substantial cost, the perceived lack of financial return from investing in them, the technical and logistical challenges involved in installing, maintaining, and updating them, and consumers' and physicians' concerns about the privacy and security of electronic health information. Blumenthal, 2009. Each one of these has its own complexities. For example, logistical challenges would include resources issues, training and retraining, resistance by potential users, and development of new workflow processes. The possibility of poor clinical system performance would impact provider productivity and also become a significant barrier to adoption. Privacy and security concerns include identity theft and widespread exposure of personal health information with the risk of it being seen by unauthorized personnel if it is sent electronically. Breaches through stolen laptops or hacking is also a concern. Another barrier to adoption is the perceived lack of return on investment to the practitioner. Slide 25. Even though perceived or bona fide barriers do exist, potential benefits to adopting and implementing EHRs are surfacing. With respect to having an effect on patient care safety, they include reducing the need to repeat tests, reducing the number of lost reports, and supporting provider decision-making. 
Slide 26. EHRs also have an effect on efficiency by improving accessibility of patient information. For example, being able to access reports anytime, anywhere. Integrating data from multiple internal and external sources. For example, improving charge capture. And facilitating coordination of healthcare delivery. For example, no need to retrieve and copy paper charts. Slide 27. The final effect of EHR adoption and implementation is on patient outcomes. An EHR has the potential to improve the quality of patient care and help providers practice better medicine. Being a repository of individual health records that reside in numerous information systems and locations, EHRs are intended to support efficient, high-quality integrated healthcare, independent of the place and time of healthcare delivery. An EHR also has the potential to provide seamless exchange of information among providers. Slide 28. This concludes Lecture A of Electronic Health Records. This lecture defined an electronic medical record, EMR, and an electronic health record, EHR, and explained their similarities and differences, identified EHR attributes and functions, discussed the issues surrounding EHR adoption and implementation, and described the impact of EHRs on patient care.